Good morning and welcome to our Mount Vernon online worship service. We are so excited you've joined us today. If you are watching for the first time and want to know more about us, please take a moment to click on the connect card on our website, mvbcnow.org. This week we will have one of our ministers reach out to you, answer any questions you may have, and send you more information. MVBCnow.org is also where you can give in a safe, secure way and submit a prayer request. We are thankful for a God who gives us opportunities to come together in many different ways to worship Him. Right now, there are people just like you all over the world who are watching this and will be joining you in worship this morning. So let me encourage you to press in, engage, and listen to what God has to say to us today. Welcome to worship.
forward this morning as we worship a God who saves. Let's sing to him today.
Psalm 105. I'm going to read the first four verses for us today. It says this, church. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Today as we're worshiping, and we're worshiping in many homes today, all over Glen Allen, all over Richmond, all over Virginia perhaps, as we worship the Lord today, we want to seek his face. We want to seek the Lord. We want to seek his strength. We want to seek him for who he is. We want to seek the Lord, and may our hearts rejoice in that because we're seeking after him. So let's continue to worship him because he is so wonderful and so awesome and so loving. Let's praise the Lord today.
Thank you for being here today and, and, and inviting us to worship you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for the truth that is revealed in these songs, and we thank you that your spirit is in this place, in our homes right now with our families. Lord, we want to continue to worship you as we hear from your word here. And Father, may your word speak to us. May we respond to that word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Mount Vernon. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our worship services. Uh, thank you, Pastor John, for leading us in our worship so far. And I hope that you have your copy of God's Word there in your home because we're going to journey through one of my favorite passages this morning, a passage of Scripture that I really believe God is going to use to speak directly to you uh, right where you are. It's a passage that has been stirring in my heart all week long. I shared it in one of my announcement videos this past week, and I want to take time to just develop it and just walk our way through what this passage can mean for us today. You know, if you have been watching the news, uh, you can get a little anxious if you have been trying to wrap your arms around the problems of today, uh, you can be a little fearful, and my hope this morning is that from God's word we're going to see how we can focus our attention not on the problems around us but we can focus our attention on God's power to meet those problems one by one you know it was Corey Tim Boone Boom who once said when I look at the world I'm stressed when I look within myself I am depressed but when I look to him when I look to God I am at rest and that's my hope this morning is that we can kind of begin to see things from God's perspective as we read his word. You know, what worship is and what we've done for uh, so far in our worship service has just been trying to take our attention for a moment off of whatever is going on in our life, putting it and setting it aside just for a few moments and taking it time to focus our attention on God Almighty. You know, when it's almost like a magnifying glass. When we say, like in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
And he, then he goes on and says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You know, that idea of magnifying God, it doesn't mean God's any bigger, but it's just like a magnifying glass. The more we worship him, the bigger he may get to us. The more that we continue to saturate our minds with what's going on on the news or uh, the problems that exist that continue to get bigger and bigger in our minds. It may not be bigger, but it's getting bigger to us. My hope is that as we study God's word and hear from him this morning, that we'll begin to lift our eyes past the issues of today and begin to lift them up and see God Almighty and see his strength and see his power. That's my hope for us this morning. You know, as a little kid, I remember uh, when I would take a bath and I would, and I would put shampoo in my hair and uh, not the new kids shampoo that uh, is tear free, but the, the regular shampoo. And I would uh, begin to uh, have water coming over my head from a, from a cup or something. And so I would immediately put my head down. Uh, but whenever I did that, inevitably the soap would get into my eyes and begin to burn my eyes. And you have probably experienced the same thing yourself. And I remember uh, as, as a parent of three boys, and I've been trying to teach them as well, and as the, uh, as the older ones have grown up, they understand it now, but, but even young Levi, I have to teach him while I'm scrubbing his hair with that shampoo, I tell him this phrase, keep looking up, keep looking up. And because when the, when the soap is coming down or when the water is coming down and, 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 and dripping down, his immediate natural response is to look down. And then the soap comes down his eyes and then it begins to burn. I can't do anything about it. But if he'll just keep looking up, then I can scrub his hair, I can rinse it out, and the soap doesn't get in his eyes. You know, the same idea is present for us today in our world. Keep looking up. Remember the Corey Ten Boom uh, quote. When I look at the world, I'm stressed. If I look within, I am depressed. But if I look to God, I am at rest. So if you have uh, Psalm 121, if you take a minute and read with me these uh, first eight verses, the, these eight verses of Psalm 121, it reads like this. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not, will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You know, um, this, song is what we, uh, this psalm is what we would call a song of ascent. And uh, the Psalms 120 through about 134, they're known as Psalms of Ascent. And the book of Psalms is basically the hymn book of the people of God in the Old Testament. And so this part of, the, of this hymn book is the songs that the people of God would sing as they would ascend. Where were they were ascending? The three different times in the Jewish calendar year where they would go to Jerusalem to worship God at a festival. As they're journeying from all over Israel, they're coming to Jerusalem, they're always going up or they're ascending. And, you know, when we went to Israel this past year, we would, we would come from perhaps the northern part of Israel and we were going to Jerusalem, but you're always going up. Why? Because Jerusalem is elevated. It's a, it's a higher elevation, so you're always going up. And in the Old Testament, when you would read, or in the Bible, you would read about going to Jerusalem. You're always going up. Why? Because it's an elevated place. There is mountainous. It's, it's got hills all around it. And so these are songs of ascent, uh, sometimes known as pilgrim songs. So this is what was being done while they're journeying to one of these three festivals in the Jewish year. They're walking together and they're singing these, these songs to God. Well, what was going on here is you have the, a journeyman, somebody who's walking, and they're seeing all of the hills. 
the commentators land in two different directions on this idea in fa- found in verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord uh, who made the heavens and the earth. One, uh, com- one way of looking at this is referring to the idea of the high places. You know, in the Old Testament, you see these places of idolatrous worship that the pagans that surrounded Israel would, would build these shrines or build these places of worship uh, in the high places. And so even in the Old Testament, it would refer to the high places. And sometimes an Israelite king, a, a king of Judah, a king of Israel would develop those high places. And it meant a place of worship or idol worship. And they were known as the high places. Sometimes you would read about a king who would tear down the high places. And what was it referring to? Those places of worship. And so this idea of, I will look, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. That's Jehovah, Jehovah God, the maker of heaven and earth. And so the idea here would be that we don't put our trust in any other idols or any other gods or any other deities, not the high places. When I look at the high places and I see these other places of worship, I'm not going there for my help. No, I'm journeying to Jerusalem because that's where the temple of God was. And, he, and they're saying, you know, our help comes from Jehovah. But then there's also the second idea that could be in this passage. And that is as they're journeying, they're seeing the physical hills because it's very hilly uh, all around there. Beautiful, beautiful area. And as they're journeying, they just see all of these hills, all of this beautiful creation And they're singing this idea or they're uh, meditating on this idea. I look at these hills. I look at the beautiful creation from whence comes my help. My help comes not from the creation. My help comes from the creator. I just want you to see a couple of ideas from this passage um, this morning. The first one is that we are to continue to look up. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. It's a, it's, it, it's, a, it's a matter of the will. He says, I will. And in order to focus my attention on God and not on my circumstances, I have to lift my eyes. I have to look up. It's an intentional act. It's a volitional act, if you will. I will do this. I will lift up my eyes. Uh, but also, it's a vertical look. It's also a look that looks up. He says, I'm not looking around, I'm looking up. And actually, it's a visionary look as well in this regard. He's not just deciding to look. He's not just deciding to look up. He's deciding to look beyond what is naturally around him to see past. Perhaps to see further than the hills themselves to where he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help doesn't come from the hills. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He is seeing with the eye of faith. He's looking past creation and he's saying, there is another world out there. There's an invisible world. I can see the visible world around me, but no, I'm going to look past that visible world to a world that is invisible to my human eye. And I can only see it with the eye of faith. You know, the uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, even in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, Now without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. That he is what? That he exists and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, 1 John 5 verse 4, it describes this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. The psalmist here is speaking to seeing the unseen. Faith is seeing in the unseen world. It's understanding that there is someone behind everything that we see. And, the, and the, one of the ways that we can get encouragement this morning is for us to see that God is at work. That we may not be able to see him, but we can see his work. We can see his handiwork. You know, I was thinking about uh, this, uh, the piano over here. 
uh, you know, imagine this silly little story, but imagine that you've got a, a family of mice underneath the, that live underneath this piano, and uh, they, they hear music played uh, all throughout the day. They hear this wonderful music played, but they don't know where it's coming from. They can't see a, a person playing on this piano. And finally, one day, a little mouse comes up uh, through the side here and sees, while the music is being played, sees the different wires that are being pulled at different levels and uh, different uh, lengths. And then he rushes back down to the rest of his family and says, I know now that there's not an unseen player. Uh, no, no, there's not an unseen player. It's the wires. It's different levels of wires. It's different distances of wires. That's what's making the music play. And so then the music continues to play. The unseen player continues to play. And then finally, one, another day, another mouse runs up uh, into the piano and sees, oh no, it's not the wire. It's not just the wires. It's also the hammer. So he comes back down and says, ah, I've proven that there is no unseen player. Because I can see the hammers, and it's the hammers that are making the music. It's the wires that are making the music. And so they say, aha, there is no unseen player. And all the while, the unseen player is still playing. That's no different than in our world where we see all of God's handiwork. You know, Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, all the while, God is shouting at this world that he exists, that he loves them, that he cares for them. All around us, we can see it, and yet still some would deny his existence just simply because they say, well, no, I, I've figured it out. I know the laws of gravity. I know the laws of science. I know the, th this is why the laws of mathematics. I know why things work the way they work. Well, you can explain what's working but you can't explain the who behind the what. Just like the music is still being played by this piano player, this unseen player. And in the same way, God is still at work, constantly ordering everything that we see around us. The psalmist is saying, from whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The maker of heaven and earth. Well, I want us to see not just that we are to keep looking up, not just to see beyond this world that we have around us and all that, is, uh, all that exists around us and to not only see and put our trust in God for who he is, but secondly, I want us to see uh, what we are to do with, this, uh, with God. How can we trust him? And uh, you can see it again in verse 3. He says three different things about how he will lift up his children. And those three things are found right here in, in verses 3 through 8. The first thing I want you to see is that he provides for you. He provides for you. Notice, if you will, first of all, in verse 2, he says, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord uh, who made heaven and earth. This idea of help is the idea of assistance. It's the idea of provision. The point is that we're looking to God to provide for us. He, he promises that he is there to provide for us. He says it here in verse 3 and 4. He says, I'll not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. It's the imagery of when you're asleep, God's not asleep. When you're at rest, God is still working. You know, um, another psalm has provided a lot of comfort for folks during this time. And that's Psalm 23, where, where he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Notice that he is bringing us to green pastures and allowing us to rest in those green pastures. What's the imagery there? There was a, a, a shepherd who had heard a preacher comment on this uh, Psalm 23 passage, and he says, uh, I want to tell you why shepherds will take their sheep in the middle of the day and let them rest in this green pasture where it's luscious grass. And he said, well, what is it? He said, it's because uh, during that time they want the sheep to be well fed, but then not only that, secondly, they want to lie down where there's plenty of green grass, plenty of food for that sheep so that they know they are being provided for. So that they can rest. They can sleep. 
You know, there was a, a, a tragedy that occurred in our world many years ago where children uh, had lost their parents in a tragedy. And what occurred from that was uh, the Red Cross had come in. They were trying to help provide places uh, to care for these children. And the children were hungry. The children were tired, uh, but they couldn't rest well. Even if they were well fed, they still couldn't rest well. And so finally a child psychiatrist had been brought in to see if he could help these children rest better because at nighttime they just would not sleep. They were always restless. And so <clears throat> finally this psychiatrist said, here's what you do. Feed them really well and then right before they go to bed, put a slice of bread in, in their hand and promise them and tell them this is for the morning so that you can have something to eat when you get up tomorrow. See, they had been so hungry for, for so, so long that they were nervous about not having enough food. And so when a, the restless child would awaken in the middle of the night and normally not be able to get back to sleep, they would hold that piece of bread and then they would be able to go back to sleep and rest. They would sniff it, sometimes they would nibble on it, but then they would tuck it back under their pillow or under their cover and go back to sleep. Here's the idea that God is providing for us. He says that he wants to provide for us for our every need. Psalm 121 says he provides for us. But then uh, notice that he also protects us. He protects us. In, in verse 6, it says, The sun shall not strike you by day, uh, nor the moon by night. And we all, we all understand the dangers that are possible there with the sun and heat strokes and, and uh, damage from the sun. But what is this idea of uh, danger from the moon? Well, it could just be referring to the days and months, uh, just the time that is involved. God's going to be your protector no matter what time of, of day it is or year or month. But it could also be describing this idea of maybe the moon had negative effects on people. Uh, you know, there, there's just colloquial uh, ideas out there that, you know, when there's a full moon, that crazy things happen. Uh, you know, individuals will, will say that anecdotally, where watch out for the full moon. The word lunatic uh, comes from the word lunar, which is the Latin word for moon. And so uh, maybe, we, may, maybe that's what's being referred to here. But even if there's danger that comes from any of these elements, God will protect us. That's the imagery. He's not only going to be our provider. He's not only going to be our protector. But now thirdly, he's going to be our preserver. He is going to preserve us. I want you to notice a word that's used six times in these eight verses, and it's the word in verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, verse 7, verse 8. He uses the word, he who keeps you will not slumber, in verse 3. Verse 4, he who keeps Israel. Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. Verse 7, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Uh, he will preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. That's the same word in Hebrew. The keeper, the preserver. It's someone who is preserving you or keeping you safe, protecting you. And the imagery here is that he's not only going to provide for us, he's not only going to protect us, but he's also going to preserve us. It's a beautiful picture of God's love for his people. Uh, he says that he's going to preserve you from all evil. That's not necessarily from the evil that's around us, that... Uh, we may have to face it's talking about preserving us from doing evil he will keep you and then not not only that he says he'll preserve your soul you know the imagery here is that of of security you know we, we uh, talk about the security of the believer that idea comes from uh, verses of scripture like John 10, 27 through 29. That basically says, Jesus says, the Lord will not let you out of my hand. Uh, God will not let you out of the hand of Jesus. And then he says, you'll not be taken out. No one can snatch you out of my hand. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. This idea that we are preserved uh, as children of God. It's a beautiful picture that those who genuinely have given their life to Jesus Christ, God will preserve to the end. God will keep us safe to the end. A second part of that is the perseverance of the saints. That I don't want out. 
that I am going to be walking with him all the way until I enter the gates of heaven. God's preservation and then our perseverance. He says he's going to preserve us. He's going to keep us. He's going to preserve us all the way to the end. Here's my question for us. If we are trusting God for our eternal security, why is it so hard for us to trust him with our earthly security? Why is it so difficult for us to trust him from day to day, even in the midst of this crisis that we're going through uh, individually? And I don't want to minimize that. But if we can trust God for our eternal security as his children, we have given our life to Jesus Christ. We've said, Jesus, be our Lord and be our Savior. We praise the Lord for our eternal hope in heaven. Why can we not also trust him for our daily needs to be met, for his provision when we need it, those green pastures? Why can we not rest in the fact that God is not slumbering, he's not sleeping, so we can sleep. Uh, there was a, a story, a true story, in World War II um, in, when, when the bombings were taking place and uh, there was a godly Christian woman who was uh, older, much older, and after the bombings of this particular town took place, uh, people were searching for all of the community members and everybody knew this godly Christian woman and, and, but couldn't find her, didn't know where she was until they finally found her asleep. <laughs> in her own bed. And they said, uh, didn't you hear the bombings? They woke her up. They said, didn't you hear the bombings? Weren't you scared? And she, said, she referenced this verse right here, uh, that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. She said, my Bible says to me that God never slumbers nor sleeps. And she said, I didn't, re I didn't think it was, there was any sense to us both being awake. So I went on to sleep. Even in the midst of difficulties, you can rest. That God is on his throne. That he's at work, he'll provide for me, he will protect me, he will preserve me. If he uh, has given me an eternal hope and a security in heaven, then why can we not trust him also for our temporary earthly needs? I, I want you to picture in your mind the image of Superman. And uh, Superman is flying into a burning building and rescuing this person who is in need of being rescued. He picks him up and grabs him by the arms and, and flies out of the burning building and, and is flying up into the sky. And this person who has just been rescued from the, from the burning building looks up and says, don't drop me, don't drop me. And Superman looks back and he says, listen, if I saved you from the burning building, I'm not going to let you fall. And in the same way, Jesus Christ, hear the words of God this morning, that, that he who has given us eternal security, he will preserve us to the end. He's also going to take care of us day to day. He's going to take care of us this week. He's going to take care of us. I don't know how it's going to look, and you don't either. None of us know. But we can trust in the power of God Almighty and the love and the care and the concern of a heavenly Father who loves us and knows exactly what we're going through. You know, none of this surprises God. None of what you're going through surprises God. But I will tell you this, that it's time for God's people to rest in the love of God and in the sovereign plan and purpose of God. So, let's look up unto the hills. Is that where we get our help? What can we say today? Uh, look unto politics from whence comes my help? Does your help come from politics? Absolutely not. Uh, from whence comes my help? The stock market. Nope, my help doesn't come from there. Uh, the, the community programs, does that, is that where your help comes from? Nope, sorry. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It doesn't mean that God doesn't use these other programs to help his people. But now listen, my friend, my help comes from the Lord. No matter what we're going through, God will protect us, he will provide for us, and he will preserve us. And I'm praying for you that we will lift our eyes past our circumstances and lift our eyes to a Heavenly Father who loves us so much and cares for us. Would you pray with me? 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for each person watching. And I pray, Father, right now that you would help, help us understand that you have given us an eternal hope of heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you died on the cross so that I could have a relationship with God and I could have a secure home promised for me in heaven when I leave this earth. Lord God, I pray right now that if there's anybody who's listening who says, I don't know if I am a Christian. I don't know if I have ever given my life to Jesus Christ. I don't know if I've ever said to Jesus, be my Lord. Right there where, where you are, where you're watching, would you just pray something like this? Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but you died for sinners like me. I pray that you would come into my life. You would make me new. I call you my Lord. I call you my Savior. Help me never be ashamed of you. I want to live for you the rest of my life. Dear God, I pray also for those of us who have walked with you for many years that even in a turbulent time like this we can lift our eyes past what we see around us and lift our eyes to an invisible God who is at work we may not see you but we can see all of your handiwork around us and Lord we can trust you and I pray Father that you would allow you would help us to continue to trust you in the days to come. Father, may we be a light of peace and a light of hope and of constant joy for those who see us and know that we're believers. Help us be a place of refuge for others and we can be courageous for them as well. Help us be a witness for you and not be ashamed of you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning for worship. We want to help you respond to God in a number of ways. To further apply the truth of God's word to your life, we have provided a discussion guide link, which you can access on our mvbcnow.org website. You can use this discussion guide personally or with family and friends. Maybe today, God is calling you to give your life to Him and recognize Him as the Lord of your life. You can pray something like, Lord, I am a sinner, and I need you. Please save me. I give my life to you and serve you. If you made that decision, please let us know by filling out our online connection card, and we will reach out to you this week. Maybe your next step is to be baptized and or join the family of Mount Vernon here please fill out the online connection card and we will get in touch with you this week. You know, church, for all of us, this has looked different this week as we have moved online. Our ministers have been working hard to connect our church family and provide ways for you to grow in your faith. This is all made available because of your gracious giving. The church office is still open so you can come by or mail your tithes and offerings. Many this past week have moved to online giving, which is an easy, secure method to support our mission as a church. Remember, if this is your first time, please fill out our online connection card. And if you have a prayer request, let us know online as well. We know this week will bring more challenges, but we want you to know that we are praying for you in the situation that we're all facing. Mount Vernon Online will have many more devotions and opportunities for prayer this week, including our Wednesday night Bible study and Sunday morning worship service. This week, we pray that God will continue to be your source of peace. Have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you soon.